Battle Mage has been released. And as of this video, there are plenty of reviews praising it, or maybe even saying almost Intel, while the comment sections are full of people fighting over numbers or other nonsense. However, I'm excited for the new ARC in Intel's lineup of GPUs. Get it? Especially if they release a B380 sometime in 2025. But as for one final send-off, and for the sake of our little discussion today, I wanted to give the ARC A380 one last look because... Well, is it a bit too late for me to say this, it looks like this is finally a GPU that I can sort of recommend. I've made two whole videos reviewing this card, and if you've seen those older videos, you would know that I personally didn't think the A380 was worth nearly anyone's time. But if you saw my recent $500 build, you would have heard me mention that times do change, and that specifically the ARC A380 is sort of an anomaly. How so? Well, I will do my best to not try and waste everyone's time, but let's talk about the three main issues a lot of people had with Intel's ARC cards, and go through whether or not things have been improved on or outright fixed in the last couple of years. Let's start with one that is near and dear to my heart, considering I never got to fully investigate its details due to my issues with resizable bar. For some, PC gaming is very, very expensive, whether the factors be where you live to what's even available at the time. One of my biggest issues with ARC, let alone the A380, was that you need a new system to really use the card at all, or cards, considering its heavy reliance on resizable bar. This hasn't changed, but what did change was the market. Besides the ARC A380 itself somehow becoming cheaper, so did everything else including motherboards with the golden feature. And this also includes the used market beginning to populate with boards holding this requirement for reasonable prices. My biggest gripe still is that you need a resizable bar, which eliminates the idea of buying a cheap old Dell Optiplex for 50-ish bucks and throwing this guy in there. But as it stands, there really isn't anything like this new that you can buy on the market currently. That being said, if this video does get like 100,000 views or whatever for no reason, I will attempt to do the rebar driver mod that in theory would make it possible to use our cards on older systems. But uh, anyways, now it is fair and reasonable for many people to buy this card, especially when you are on a tighter budget when building an all new system. I showed that this was very possible in my $500 budget build that I posted recently. Oh, check it out if you haven't already. It's pretty reasonable. <laughs> yeah, 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 we get it, budget bin, but I only play older games, like DirectX 9 titles, and the art cards don't even have native support for it. So, uh, yeah. It was true that back then playing DirectX 9 titles, or even 10 or 11, was essentially a no-go due to the API having to be emulated. It literally made no sense to many budget gamers, considering you could just buy an old $20 or $40 GPU if you wanted to play your classics with ease cheaply. This is my biggest gripe with Intel's ARC cards. Well, it was. Before I show you all the newer games that I tested, all three of them, I took the liberty of itemizing all the games I own off the noggin that I enjoyed one way or the other, varying in release date, DirectX version, etc., and gave them all basic taste tests as to whether or not they were running at virtually max settings while not chugging or dropping frames. And, well, besides one game that I will go into in a second, everything ran fantastic. Every title I played ran amazingly at max settings or near max settings, and titles that were previously running terribly or not running much to begin with run at near perfection now. If I remember correctly, GTA 5 in particular had to be lowered to 720p, and it still sucked even when I had to lower settings to medium or low. But now, I can run at 1080p with high settings and achieve 100fps quite easily. Truly, the GPU 180'd, or you could say, 380'd, <laughs> and really became usable with these older games. The only game out of the 28 older titles that I tested that didn't run was Civilization V, and this feels more like an exception more than the rules since it straight up won't boot. It might have something to do with the 2K launcher that was embedded into the game's startup having been ripped out recently, even though the game did work on my main rig, but this isn't a huge deal breaker. Honestly, especially considering how well every game I have played has run thus far. Okay, well, that's cool and all budget bin, but 
I play newer games? And the A380 isn't going to run any of those since it, it sucks. Well, it half sucks. I imagine a majority of AAA titles being released in 2025 won't be able to run with this card. And certainly, many games this year and even the previous year will struggle a tad to run as well. I showed that it could run games like Red Dead Redemption 2 at fair settings with decent performance with plenty of room to tweak to the liking of the player in my reasonable $500 budget build video, as well as Cyberpunk 2077, which ran splendidly under the same notion that moving a preset down can achieve higher frame rates. I'm not a rich YouTuber who can afford to pay for every major title that releases, especially at price tags like $69.99, but I do have a couple of games that appear to run reasonably that released in the last year or two. But first, let's start with Counter-Strike 2. Yeah, that game that came out in 2012. Seriously, Valve, please fix. But I wanted to start with this game because it runs fairly nice in high settings, which tells me any newer major esports that release will run great on this card, given how low spec the games are to begin with, all things considered, which is great to see. I was worried that the game would struggle personally, but then again, I did get Deadlock to run on this GPU, so yeah, I shouldn't be too surprised, I suppose. Hitman 3, or technically Hitman World of Assassination, is the next title I checked, but also this is basically a game from 2016? Where the engine is? Whatever. Listen, last old game, I promise. But I figured it would be important for me to mention this since the game is pretty resource intensive. And during my tests, I figured it would have some bloating stutters, but with a mix of medium and high settings, it was really stable. Like, I have no major complaints outside of that I wish it ran better. But for the price of a tad over $100 brand new, I mean, it would be pretty stupid to create some sort of issue out of it not achieving a thousand FPS here. So, cool. <laughs> What's next? Well, this is where I feel like I ran into what's more of another exception but not the rule sort of situation. Let me paint the picture. I began to bench the game Helldivers 2, seeing what runs decently at 1080p, and pretty much knew I wasn't going to go anywhere above medium settings, and spoilers, found out that the setting between low and medium, the Steam Deck preset, was actually the best upon fiddling with sliders and whatnot. Cool, this isn't too bad, and provides us with wiggle room, even the ability to lower our resolution to get what we are looking for. Nice. However, Something terribly frightening happened during my testing, <laughs> and uh, made the game unplayable. Now, I know what you're thinking. Intel messed up one way or the other. Possibly. Yeah, but I am also willing to bet this could also just be a glitch in general from the game. It isn't the cleanest AAA title made, especially with its history. <sighs> uh, but still, not fun to see, or rather, not see? No matter what settings I changed, it still happened by the way, so yeah, a tad disappointing to see, not see. It could be a case-by-case -case situation by the way, or the planet I was on, but I don't feel like playing this game for 10 hours to find a definitive answer since I have one last major title to share with all of you. Get ready to be shocked as much as I was because I'm about to show you Stalker 2 running with the ARC A380 which the official minimum requirements call for an ARC A750 just to be able to play at 1080p low with an FPS target of 30. Now, I won't show any complex frame data, not because I wasn't able to collect it, but because, well, I'm not quite sure how to benchmark this game currently, but because more importantly, well, you know what? I will just dig right in and you will get to see what I mean. Here we have the game at 1080p low. It appears that we aren't quite reaching that 30 FPS goal, we're about 12 FPS under it, and no amount of looking up at the sky will save us. Unplayable. Just outright so. We could lower our resolution to 1600 by 900 but we will just go straight to 720p because it won't change much. No hope, I suppose. Well, let's change our resolution back to 1080p real quick and try something a bit different. Let's enable FSR 3 frame generation and see if that helps in any way. Hmm, maybe a tad, like a one frame increase? Okay, let's enable our upscaler, XESS, and put it on balanced at 50 and... 
Whoa, would you look at that? We are getting over 40 FPS no issue now and even kissing 50. That's huge. We barely have to crank the upscaler to achieve this too. Even when setting the upscaler to ultra quality plus, we still sit at around 40 here. And while I don't see too much of a quality increase, this isn't half bad in the slightest. Besides the screen tearing that I'm experiencing, this really changes the game, metaphorically, for the card. I played around with settings more and found out that you can achieve around 60 FPS while staying at ultra quality plus at 720p, and it made me very happy to see this. Around a year ago, I wouldn't believe this would have been possible with Intel, considering how they seemingly couldn't get their drivers under control and work correctly with some of the latest or recent releases. But now? I'm going to be honest and tell you that I'm speechless. Originally, I was going to wrap up this video explaining that, yes, you could taste some new titles for a bit with this card, and that ultimately most people who are buying a GPU like the ARC A380 are only doing it because they want a new card that is fairly cheap, has a warranty, and so that they can get into a higher level of gaming now while not paying three or four hundred dollars on a big GPU at the cost of not being able to play half of them today. But now? I'm wondering after testing all these games, Stalker 2 included, how much more I could actually run. Like, could I get Alan Wake 2 to run? Surely not. The new Indiana Jones game won't run for sure, but what about everything else releasing in the next year? I'm even kind of contemplating doing that BIOS mod here after I finish this video with the $100 hyper budget gaming PC in general just to see if it's easy or maybe if it works or not. Because if it does, then maybe this is actually one of the best budget cards on the $100-ish price point, if not technically the only new one. <laughs> But even if you don't like the idea of upscaling using frame generation tech, I still believe this is a great budget card for people who don't want to play the latest AAA games. You certainly won't have to worry about any indie games struggling with it. I feel like that was sort of the point of the A380. Gaming just well enough. Besides all of the stuff that has already been said about video encoding and whatnot with our cards, I can see someone pushing this thing to its limits and getting a lot done with it. Although. In a way, it is a little too late for me to tell if this card is finally worth buying. At the time of writing, you can buy an ARC A380 on Newegg, Amazon, eBay even, new at the price point of roughly $110 before taxes. This is great, but since Battle Mage launched earlier this month, I doubt they will continue to stock slash make the A380 for much longer if not right now. I do think they will be coming out with a B380, which when they do, you know I'm going to review it ASAP, but I don't think they will be as cheap as the A380s are currently. They will likely be under 200 bucks, which is still great, and as long as they have 8GB of VRAM and some RT cores or whatever, then cool. Keep the card small and have a few ITX options like the ASRock Challenger here, and you got yourself a competitive small system GPU that can actually shake up the market given how well the B580 and B570 has performed thus far. I have high hopes for Intel, even if they are a bit slow nowadays or try to innovate in other places people don't think much about, but in the end, I feel like they redeemed themselves in my eyes by making this $110 paperweight into a relatively decent budget entry level GPU. I am glad I could end this trilogy on a high note. I was afraid Intel would never get the proper drivers for it to work and that it would be nothing but a lesson in history for people looking at ARC cards in its story. I just can't wait to start the next one when the B380 eventually comes out, whenever that is. But uh, I hope that you will stay tuned when that video does come out, so subscribe if you want to see that. If you like this video, like it. Comment what you think, I would love to see what you guys think, or if you're interested in the new ARC Battle Mage series cards. Seriously, I'm, I'm pretty excited myself. Also, follow me on Blue Sky. I promise I will be active there, and honestly, I'm kind of done with Twitter. As usual, like, favorite, subscribe, share, five star, <laughs> yada, yada, yada. And, oh, as always, thanks for watching.